Okay, so the skeletal organ system um, is made of various bones. We're going to learn the names of the bones mostly during the laboratory periods. Uh, uh, next week we'll do one lab on, on le you'll learn some of the bone names, and then the week after that we'll do another laboratory in the skeletal system, and you'll learn more bone names. Uh, but just to mention a couple bones right now, so this is your thigh bone, its official name is your femur. Uh, this bone right here is the bone of your arm, it's your humerus. Um, just another, give another example, this bone right here that forms the very back of your skull is called your occipital bone. Uh, so you have um, 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 106, is that the right number? 106 bones in, in the human body. And each of those bones is considered an organ. Um, so yeah, each individual bone is considered its own organ. It's, it's an organ. Um, and all your 106 bones together are your skeleton. So before I dive into this bit here about bone tissue, let me just mention, well, why do you have a skeletal organ system? And I kind of got that there in the second line of your lecture outline lines there. Uh, the purpose of having your bones, of having your skeletal system, is a couple things. Its main thing is, or one of the main things, is it supports your weight. And that just means it allows you to stand upright. If you didn't have any bones, you would not be able to stand upright. You would just sort of collapse like a jellyfish uh, onto the ground, because you'd have no, no rock-solid uh, support, uh, supporting structures to stand upright. And I, just to make an analogy uh, with buildings, they have these big girders, these vertical beams that go up and down um, to, to hold the weight of the building, you know, to carry the weight of the building downward to the ground to hold the building up. So think of those as your bones. Uh, they're, they're there. At least one of the reasons you have a skeleton is to, is to hold up your body weight. A, another reason you have a skeleton is to surround and protect various organs in your body. Um, like the bones of your skull are there to surround and protect your brain, and the bones of your rib cage are there to surround and protect your lungs, um, and your vertebrae bones, th those are there to surround and protect your spinal cord. Um, your, 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 the bones of your skeletal system also anchor organs in the sense that uh, several of your organs are attached to your bones. Uh, a good example is muscles. I don't have a slide right there. Uh, I don't show it on the slide right there, but your skeletal muscle organs, like your bicep and your tricep, are attached to your, uh, uh, to your bones. Good. So supporting your weight, surrounding and protecting organs, um, and, and anchoring organs are three of the main functions of your, of your skeletal organ system. Okay, uh, so yeah, each bone is its own organ, like your femur is an organ, and your tibia is an organ, and each of your tarsal, your ankle bones, is an organ. Um, all organs are made out of more than one tissue. That's just part of the definition of an organ. The main tissue of each bone organ is called bone tissue. I guess that almost seems true by definition. This is what you'd expect, right? Bone tissue is the major tissue of bone organs. But what I'm pointing out here is that you do find other types of tissue in bone organs. Uh, as we'll talk about here in, in, a, in a moment, you also find some dense connective tissue that's part of bone organs. And you also find some cartilage that's part of bone organs. But the main tissue that bone organs are built out of is, is bone tissue. Uh, so let me do, talk a little bit about bone tissue. Uh, we, we actually just finished talking about it. It's one of the six connective tissue types. And if you remember our lecture on, on bone tissue, uh, we said it was a, a, a rock-like connective tissue. I think I said mineralized, but that just means rock-like tissue. Um, here we go. So this is a, well, an artist depiction of what bone tissue looks like. Uh, so um, 
the, the, the cells, or at least the major cells of bone tissue, are called osteocytes. And unfortunately, I didn't put this at this point in the lecture notes, lecture outlines. Later on in this lecture outline on the skeletal system, I do have the, the word osteocyte in there. Uh, but anyway, so the, the, the major cells of bone tissue are called osteocytes. So there's an osteocyte, and there's one, and there's one, and there's one. The, uh, remember, the, the term for the stuff that takes up the, the space between the cells of a connective tissue is called the extracellular matrix. So this kind of yellowish-looking stuff here is the extracellular matrix of the bone tissue. Um, that's mostly a, a rock-like substance called calcium phosphate. Um, calcium phosphate is, a, is basically a mineral. It's a rock-like substance that is the ground substance of the bone extracellular matrix, calcium phosphate. But in addition to the calcium phosphate, there are some collagen uh, fibers. Collagen is that tough, leathery protein. Uh, so, so crisscrossing through the bone extracellular matrix, calcium phosphate are these um, leathery uh, uh, collagen proteins to, to help strengthen the, uh, the bone tissue. Good. So the bone tissue osteocyte cells and a extracellular matrix between them, which mostly calcium phosphate, but some collagen uh, proteins also. Good. Um, so this is a bone organ. And yeah, so like I said, most of the organ is bone tissue. But there are some other types of tissue there also, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But just to, just to give you a preview, that light blue they show at the top is cartilage. That's called hyaline cartilage. And if you look closely, you can see that they've made a slightly kind of an orangey tissue at the very outside right there. That's a, that's a type of dense connective tissue that you find on the outside of the bone. But anyway, most of the bone is organ is, is bone tissue. Well, if you look at this part of the bone organ, the, this bone tissue, it has a bunch of holes in it, almost like a sponge does. Well, there's actually subcategories of bone tissue. The type of bone tissue that looks like a sponge is called spongy bone tissue. I guess that's not a big stretch of the imagination. So that part of the bone tissue is spongy bone tissue. But if you go down here, the bone tissue doesn't have any holes in it. Uh, you know, it looks more solid. And they call that compact bone. So the two subcategories of bone tissue, spongy bone and compact bone. All right. Um, let's see. So uh, yeah, your bone organs are mostly made out of bone tissue. but Kind of surprisingly, they didn't start off as made out of bone tissue. They started off as being made out of cartilage. Uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. Uh, so, you know, before we were born, we were growing inside our mother's uterus, inside our mother's womb, and at the very beginning, we were an embryo, just a, a tiny little developing baby, an embryo, and then as the embryo grow still inside the, the it's still inside the uterus um, after a few weeks we no longer call it an embryo we call it a fetus and then the fetus continues to grow and then it's eventually born and it's a newborn baby um, so when we were embryos we did have a skeleton but it was not made out of bone tissue in other words when you were an embryo you had a femur and a humerus and an occipital bone and all the other bones. You had all of those. But they were not made out of bone tissue. They were made out of cartilage. And cartilage is a, is a soft, uh, rubbery connective tissue. Well, as you developed inside the womb, inside the uterus, slowly that those cartilage bones became encased in actual bone tissue, actual hard bone tissue. And that's what they're trying to show here. It, the blue is the cartilage. And so you see this little cartilage embryonic bone. But you can see already it's starting to be encased in uh, bone tissue, what they're showing in yellow. And so as you continue to develop, you know, as you, as you uh, 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 develop from an embryo to a fetus inside the uterus, more and more of the original cartilage bone 
is getting encased in bone tissue, surrounded by bone tissue. And by the time you're a newborn baby, almost all of the original um, cartilage bone has been surrounded and encased in actual bone tissue. So that's kind of how your skeleton develops. As an embryo, it's your bone, your skeleton is made out of cartilage, and then it gets encased and essentially turned into um, uh, bone. Well, that process of covering the embryo's cartilage skeleton with actual bone tissue is called ossification. Uh, os means bone, so it just means turning it, turning it into bone or surrounding it by bone is ossification. And there's some specialized bone cells that do that. They're called osteoblasts, the, the bone cells that specialize in, in converting cartilage into bone or covering cartilage with bone are osteoblasts. All righty. Um, well, so as the original cartilage bone gets surrounded by and covered with bone tissue, the cartilage eventually kind of dies away, and it leaves a hollow space inside the center of the bone, and we call that hollow space the medullary cavity. And so it's kind of neat. If you were to look inside one of your bones now as a person who's you know, an adult and been born, you know, 17 or 20 years ago, however old you are. Um, if you look inside your bones, you can still see the, the hollow space where that original, where your original embryonic bone used to be, and we call that hollow space the medullary cavity. And you can see it, uh, you can see it right here, and maybe a bit of that medullary cavity even in the fetal stage right there. Okay, uh, now your your skeletal system doesn't want to waste that medullary cavity space. It wants to put it to good use. Um, and so what your skeletal system actually does is fill up your medullary cavities with a type of tissue called marrow, or sometimes it's called bone marrow, but uh, we can just say marrow. So here's the medullary cavity inside this bone right there. Uh, but it's actually filled with marrow. That, that sort of yellowish looking stuff they're showing there is the, is the marrow that fills uh, this medullary cavity. Uh, there's actually two types of marrow. One is called yellow marrow, which is what they're showing there, and the other is called red marrow. The yellow mar marrow is adipose tissue. Uh, so it sounds maybe a little weird, but um, inside your bones, or at least inside some of your bones, you find some fat tissue the yellow marrow in the, in, in the medullary cavity. With other bones, you have a different type of marrow called red marrow, which is red colored. And um, the red marrow is actually a, the manufacturing center for your blood cells. Um, all of your blood cells are created inside uh, the red marrow of your bones. Oh, let me give you a quick review question. Um, when we were talking about the blood, few minutes ago, I said that there's an actual phrase that means the blood cells. Does anybody recall what that is? Blood cells. We call the three blood cells. They are the formed elements, yes. So what a, if I was using proper anatomical terminology here, I would have said the red marrow is the tissue that, that forms the formed elements, the blood cells. Okay, good. So uh, the marrow is the tissue inside the medullary cavities, the hollow space in the middle of the bone, and you got yellow marrow or red marrow, which is adipose tissue, and the red marrow is um, basically blood cell manufacturing tissue. Um, there's an interesting kind of developmental thing that relates to the two types of marrow. When you're a newborn baby and a young person, all of your marrow is red marrow. But the older you get, more and more of that red marrow becomes replaced with yellow marrow. Uh, so you're, 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 over the course of your lifetime, your red marrow slowly gets converted into yellow marrow. You always have some red marrow, no matter how old you are. But it's also true that the older you get, the less red marrow you have and the more yellow marrow you have. And I think what's going on there, that is a young growing person, you just need more blood cells to be manufactured than an older person. And so 
as a young person, all of your marrow is, is red marrow. All right, let's see. Um, oh, this is a, I guess I want to say a frontal cut of a bone. I think it's the femur. And um, remember, there's these two types of bones, the, the, the spongy bone and the compact bone. You can see the spongy bone is there, and the compact bone is, is down there. Um, let me see something here. Not there. No, nope, that's not what I wanted. Let me go back a slide or two. Uh, here we go. Okay. Um, so bones come in many different shapes. Um, some bones are kind of flat, like a piece of a jigsaw puzzle. Other bones are kind of round or cube-shaped, almost like a, a, a dice. Uh, other bones have this shape right here, uh, which is called a long bone shape. So any bone that looks like this is, is you say the shape of that bone is, is a long bone, or you say it is a long bone. And so notice the basic shape we're talking about. A long bone has a long shaft, like a tubular area like that, but at its ends it sort of gets wider and sort of some like a knob-like structures here at, at each end. Well, there's some terms for that. The, the shaft of the long bone, the, the central part, is called the diaphysis, and each of the rounded kind of knobby ends is called an epiphysis. So there's an epiphysis, there's the diaphysis, and there's the other epiphysis. Um, you find these long bones generally in your, your limbs, in your arms and legs. And you might remember from our lecture on anatomy terms, we use distal and proximal to talk about relative positions on, on the limbs. Distal means further away from your trunk, and proximal means closer to, to your trunk. So again, thinking of these long bones as being part of your arms or legs, the epiphysis that's closer to your trunk is called the proximal epiphysis, and the epiphysis that's further away from your trunk is called the distal epiphysis. Good, so each long bone has one diaphysis and two epiphysises. Um, the epiphysis is mostly spongy bone, that's the one that looks like a sponge with all the little holes in it. And you can see here they kind of did a cutaway so you can see this, that it's the epiphysis is spongy bone. But the diaphysis is compact bone and you can see that uh, in there like that. All right, uh, what else? The diaphysis has uh, a layer of dense connective tissue protecting the outside of it. That thin sort of orangish layer that they put there on each side of the diaphysis is the, uh, the dense connective tissue that protects the bone. That's called the, 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 the peri, uh, periosteum, is the, uh, is the dense connective tissue on the outside of the bone. Um, boy, I didn't add what you find on the outside of the epiphysis, but maybe I should. Um, that's the, the hyaline cartilage. The, uh, Notice this blue covering right here on this epiphysis and this blue covering right there on that epiphysis. That's the, the hyaline cartilage, which remembers that rubbery tissue to protect the tips of the bone uh, in joints. Okay, well, let me just pause for a second to review something I mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. So each bone is considered an organ, like this long bone is an organ. And organs are made out of several tissues. The main tissue of any bone is bone tissue, but you do find other tissues. You also find hyaline cartilage and um, dense connective tissue as, as part of the bone. All righty. Uh, well, uh, moving on from long bones. Oh, actually, before I go on, the, the next slide shows a, an actual photograph of 
I think also the uh, one of the long bones. Yeah, I guess I showed this a moment ago. You can clearly see that in the epiphysis, it's spongy bone, but when you go down into the diaphysis, it's no longer spongy. It's now the compact bone. And that looks like it's part of the medullary cavity. And I guess that's either red or yellow marrow that's filling the medullary cavity right there. Yes? Go, go, go up one a little bit. Like to this part. OK. All right. OK, good, good, good. All right. Um, Let's see. All right. Um, so just to review a concept we talked about a few minutes ago, uh, when you were an embryo, you had a skeleton, but it was not made out of bone tissue. It was made out of cartilage. And then as you developed inside your mom's womb, those original cartilage bones uh, or skeleton was covered and replaced and turned into actual bone tissue. So that by, the time, by the time you're a newborn baby, the bone is um, is uh, uh, almost all bone tissue. But there, there are some parts of the bone that remain cartilage. And I guess I mentioned one already, um, the hyaline cartilage at the tips of the epiphysis is, is, remains cartilage. There's another part of your bone that remains cartilage, and that's the part that they're showing as this blue line there and that blue line there. Those are called the epiphysical plates. And you can see that the, the epiphysical plates are located right between each epiphysis and the diaphysis, right? There's the epiphysial plate at the proximal epiphysis, and here's the epiphysial plate that's by the distal epiphysis. But yeah, right at the border between the diaphysis and each epiphysis is this cartilage area called an epiphysial plate. Um, those are important. Those are growth centers for your bones. So you, know, you, you start off as a little newborn baby, and then over the years, you grow and you grow and you grow till you reach your final adult height, right? Well, a lot of that growth of your body is from your bones getting longer. And yeah, those epiphysial plates, those cartilage plates, are the growth centers of your bone. That's where the, that's where the growth actually happens. So they are an area of hyaline cartilage between the epiphysis and the diaphysis. Those purple cells are supposed to be the cartilage cells of the epiphysial plates and they are where your bone grows. Um, here's the way it works. When your bones are growing, what's actually happening is the cartilage cells are reproducing themselves. You're getting more cartilage cells. And so at first you might say, well, so my bones are gonna get more and more cartilage. Well, as fast as the new cartilage cells are made, they get ossified, they get turned into bone tissue. So yes, it's actually cartilage cells that are reproducing, but it ends up adding bone tissue to your bones, not cartilage tissue. And so when I click the button, you'll see that. You'll see these cartilage cells reproducing, but the, the, the cartilage cells that get made get turned into bone tissue, so your, your, your bone actually gets more bone tissue. There you can see the cartilage cells are reproducing, but they get, they're getting turned into new bone tissue, so your bones grow longer and longer and longer when the cartilage cells reproduce. Uh, in your epiphysical plates. Cartilage continuously made and it's ossified, it's turned into bone um, and, uh, until you reach puberty. When you go through puberty, the, the hormones of puberty, uh, which cause all sorts of interesting problems and changes, right? The hormones of puberty cause those cartilage cells to become 100% bone and then there's gonna be no more growth. Once, the, uh, once you reach puberty, these cartilage cells essentially get turned into bone, and that's no more growth is possible once, once you don't have any epiphysial plates anymore. When the epiphysial plates get turned into bone tissue, you now say it called an epiphysial line. Um, so I stopped growing decades ago. So if you look at my bones, I do not have any epiphysial plates. I have no cartilage in those areas, but you would be able to see epiphysial lines on my bones. Uh, but I think some of you are young enough that you're still growing, so some of you still have epiphysial plates. Some of you still have cartilage here, and, and I don't. 
All right, and you can see it on this picture of the bone right here. There's the epiphyseal line, so this must be a bone from a person who's, who's gone past puberty. All right, that's probably a good stopping point.